Good morning, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. We're having a look at an awesome subject today, and that is our great covenant of love. You know, God is love. He doesn't just love us, which he does, but it's because he is the person love. And out of his great love for us, he gave us a covenant that we can be sure of. You're going to enjoy this. I'll see you later. Well, in this great year where we're experiencing great provision, great acceleration, great growth from a great God, living by great faith, it seems right to talk about our great covenant that we have in His love. Because when you take the love of God, the next step forward out of that love is the covenant that He's made with us. And when we say covenant, the word covenant, everybody say covenant. You know, I, I wonder if before we got saved and we came to church, whether we even use the word like that in our English language. You know, we don't talk about covenant, you know, our covenant with you, and you just sign this covenant. You know, we've got wills and testaments without realizing we're talking about covenant. Have you ever signed a contract in your life? Have you heard the word contract? You've used the word contract? Well, covenant is a contract. When we talk about covenant, so when we get born again and we come into the kingdom of God and then we start hearing words flying around like covenant. What is a covenant? You know, we've got this great covenant with Jesus. Yes, amen, hallelujah. But what does that mean? When you heard the word blood covenant. Everybody say blood covenant. You know, when Jesus said, unless, unless you eat of my flesh and drink my blood, a lot of people go, gross. <laughs> to an unsaved mind, when you talk about eating flesh and drinking blood, that sounds barbaric, sounds occultic. And yet Jesus used it, and the people at that moment, when they heard that, they walked out of his presence. And we think it's because he said something offensive. No, he was digging into something that we need to renew our minds to. So... Some of us have a kind of an understanding what covenant is. Someone's just been saved, just, just heard the word blood covenant. What does that even mean? What does that entail? Some of us have been walking for some time with it. And I believe we need to renew our minds so that we understand what does that mean? Because when you understand what covenant is, you get a hold of a blood covenant, you become fearless in the face of danger. You remember David when he faced Goliath? The rest of Israel were lying in the trenches, shivering and shaking, scared, frightened. This young shepherd boy arrives, and he says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And when you study out covenant, you find out what he was saying is, Who is this man without a covenant? I have a covenant. He doesn't. That makes me the winner. Not whether I fight this battle or not. I start this battle with a winner. He, he knew he could throw the covenant out there. And he said the rest of Israel, they lost sight of the covenant. But this young man remembered his covenant. And he threw that out. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that dares to defy the armies of God? Why? The army of God was under the covenant. David knew that he could take on that giant with a stone in his hand. This seasoned veteran, warrior, champion. This young boy went running at him, running at him. Run he didn't walk up there. He sprinted at the guy. You got to know something that other people don't know. To face a giant like that with that kind of attitude. And family of God, many of us are facing giants in our lives. You may not be facing a big man, but it could be a financial giant, a disease giant, a relationship giant, oppression, something, something that looks insurmountable. How could I ever take it? In your own natural strength, it doesn't make any sense. That's what the rest of Israel were looking at. You see, that day, 
Goliath was coming out after Saul. Because Saul stood shoulders, head and shoulders above the rest of Israel. There was a, if the whole army was standing there, you could spot Saul in the crowd. Man, the shortest man was at his shoulder. And songs were written about him, about his victories. And Goliath wanted him. And yet that man who was anointed king forgot his covenant. And this little boy showed up. He understood something. You getting this? And so you may see other people handling life and they're struggling. And you see somebody who looks like they should be able to take this thing on. And they fail. And the problem destroys them. And then you look at your own life. And you think, if, if, if it took him out, what's it going to do to me? But when you understand covenant, you don't look at the size of the situation. You don't look at the person. You don't even care what happened to somebody else that looks like they were more educated. They had more money. They were healthier. They were stronger. Whatever reason we think people succeed in life, how come they failed? That doesn't bother you because none of that's relevant. When you understand the power of a covenant. Everybody say covenant. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace you have been saved. How? Through faith. That not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Hallelujah. How are you glad you're going to heaven? How are you desperately want to go to heaven? God wants to get you to heaven more than you want to be there. It's not like we beg God to let us into heaven. He said, well, let's see what we can do. No, it was entirely His gift. It was entirely His idea. It had nothing to do with my strength, my ability, my ability to live a good life, my ability to learn the law and obey every part of it. It had nothing to do with anything in my life. For by grace you saved. Remember once again, grace is God's overwhelming desire to treat you as if those sin never existed. Amen. And by grace He reached out. By faith we receive it. You've been saved. So I've been saved by faith. Amen. By grace. Amen. Through faith. Amen. Verse 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what reason? Four good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Woo! Lift your hand and say, I am designed to succeed. Not, not even destined. I'm designed to succeed. Your whole makeup. You've been created for good works. Hallelujah. You've been created to lay hands on the sick for them to recover. That's your makeup. You've been created to be generous. Amen. You've been created to love. Amen. You've been created to reach out and heal the brokenhearted. Amen. Your whole desire, your design is to take on the enemy and destroy his works. Amen. Why? Because Jesus already destroyed them. Amen. Now in Christ Jesus, you are created for good works. Verse 11, therefore, therefore. Remember, you are a born-again child of God, not by your choice, by His choice. And you're designed to succeed. Remember, therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh. Now, what's a Gentile? Gentile, we talk about Jews and Gentiles. At this moment in time, you must remember the Jewish people were reaching out to the Gentiles. God's original covenant was with the Jewish nation. Originally through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob became Israel, and he gave birth to 12 sons, and in there was Judah. Are you with me? So his covenants with Abraham, which then became under Moses, the Mosaic covenant, and he led the 12 tribes. And that covenant was only for Jews. 
But then God died, Jesus died, gave his life so that everyone can be saved. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever, whosoever, he burst those doors wide open. This wasn't just for the Jewish nation anymore. It was for whoever. And the Bible says that when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are grafted into that family line. And Jesus is from the tribe of Judah. You become one with him. It's as if you were born in that tribe. Not adopted, born again. So now you are circumcised in the heart. So the moment you're born again, you are born into the tribe of Judah. So you are Jew, that Jewish. You getting this? You are Jewish. I didn't say Israeli. I said Jewish from the tribe of Judah. Bump your name and say, I may not look like it, but I'm Jewish. So you are what the Bible calls a true Jew. Are you with me? So before that, you were a Gentile. So the covenant is with Judah, the tribe of Judah. Now, the covenant is with Jewish people. So before you're born again, you're without covenant, a Gentile. The Gentile dies, and you're born again Jewish. You see what I'm saying? So if you look at that, those two terms, a Jew is someone with a covenant. A Gentile is without covenant. So from now on, whenever you see the word Gentile in your Bible, you can translate that immediately, someone without covenant. All right. So with that in mind, let's have a look at what Paul is writing here. He says, you once Gentiles in the flesh. It's before you're born again. So, he's writing to people like you and me. Unless somebody here is serving Jesus and you're of Jewish birth by flesh, most of us are not of Jewish flesh by birth. You with me? So, this letter is applicable to us. So you were a Gentile in the flesh. Now listen to what he says here. Who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. Now you know what he means by that. The ones that are circumcised in the flesh, who's that? Those were the Jews born Jewish. So they were born to the Jewish line. Their family, you can trace their family tree right back to the original Judah. So they are born Jewish, and they are circumcised in the flesh. That circumcision, those that were circumcised in the flesh, automatically assumed if you're not circumcised, you don't have a covenant. Now Paul's addressing that, because that's what was happening. Once he started preaching and Peter started by preaching to the Gentiles, and then it spread, there became a split. Those that were Jewish by birth and circumcised felt that if these Gentiles, okay, in the beginning they didn't want them saved. In fact, the guys with Peter were shocked when the first ones, when the Holy Spirit came on them, they started speaking in tongues. They thought, what? Is this even possible? But there was no doubt this was God's desire. So eventually you get a group of them were saying, okay, well, then we accept everybody in, they can come in now, but they need to get circumcised in the flesh. And that's where the argument started coming up. So those that were not circumcised in the flesh, because they were circumcised in the heart, they were serving Jesus. The, the whole concept of the covenant was of the heart, and heart issue. We're no longer under the confines of the law. So just being circumcised in the flesh doesn't automatically make you a Christian. It's a decision in the heart, confession of the mouth. And that moment you say, Jesus, my Lord and Savior, 
there you're circumcised. Amen. It's done. You don't even have to go see a doctor. It happened in the heart. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So, this group that are circumcised then started calling these Gentiles who are now born again, started calling them uncircumcised. Okay, so they're born again, but they're the uncircumcised believers. <laughs> you getting this? So it became a little bit of a friction thing. This is what Paul's addressing. So he says, now you guys who are called uncircumcision by those that are circumcised, I want to show you something from the kingdom. Yeah. And he says here, yeah, now, in verse 11, when it says those who are called, underline called, because very often you'll be called something, but it doesn't mean that's what you are. If other people call you that. See, that's what he's dealing with here. He's dealing with what others are calling you, but I want you to know what God thinks of you. That's where we're going with this. Okay, so even though you called uncircumcision, verse 12, that at the time... You were without Christ. This is before you saved. You were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. You were strangers from the covenants of promise. Notice it's plural. So there's more than one covenant. But he says here, you were strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God. In the world. Now that is one heavy statement. That without the covenants, you've got no hope. Without the covenants, you got no hope. So he says that's where you came from. You came from that place. Without Christ, without covenants, without hope. But now, I love it when God butts. You know how powerful the word but is. You've ever had someone come to you and say, now, you know I love you, and you're a nice person, and I appreciate you, but it doesn't matter what they just said. Isn't that right? You really don't care what they just said. But wipes out everything that was just said. Now, turn that thing on its head. He just said, you were a Gentile, you were uncircumcised, you were without Christ. Others still think you have a problem because you're not circumcised. But you may have been a stranger, but you may have been without promise, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near, how? By the blood of of Christ by the blood everybody say blood that's what brought you into covenant verse 14 for he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation see people are trying to separate you yeah, the uncircumcised, the circumcised were trying to separate the uncircumcision. And how often have people tried to separate you on something that only can be measured in the natural? Separate you based on your education. Separate you based on your income. Separate you based on the color of your skin. Separate you based on your sex, your gender. Separate you based on whatever. But he says, this wall of separation is broken down. Everybody say broken down. Verse 15, how? He abolished in his flesh the enmity. That is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. God doesn't see 
you know, all kinds of different people. He doesn't see different religions. He sees Jew and he sees Gentile. With covenant, without. And Jesus smashed that wall down so that all can come into covenant. Hallelujah. Thus making peace. Everybody say peace. What is peace? Shalom. Wholeness. Completeness. Preservation. Protection. Simply, nothing missing, nothing broken. Everybody say, nothing missing, nothing broken. God made a covenant between Himself and Jesus, a covenant that will last for eternity. God came up with the idea of covenant, and He wanted to seal covenant between Himself and mankind. In this powerful series, Alan Bagg teaches on the value and victory of the covenant between us and God. This covenant has put you in a place where you're no longer a stranger. In this series, you will discover the power of the covenant. You get a hold of a blood covenant. You become fearless in the face of danger. You will discover how to stand secure in your covenant. It's a covenant that cannot be broken. And how to activate the blessing of the covenant. When you receive the covenant as yours, you receive that freedom and that deliverance from hell. Our covenant partner fights on our behalf. The battle is the Lord's and the victory is ours. That He sealed the covenant with His Son for eternity. And whoever believes will not perish, but have everlasting life. It's a covenant of love. Discover how you can stand secure in our great covenant of love. To order your series, contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries. You know the power of a covenant? is the fact that it's more than just a legal agreement. Sometimes when people sign an agreement, that agreement is only as strong as the person that wants to stay in it. And today's, in today's society, people just break those agreements all the time. Yet when God swore His covenant, He swore it in blood. Now, how do I receive that covenant? All the promises are written into the covenant. They are God's desire for us to enjoy it. So I encourage you, get a hold of the series. It is six parts that's going to help you understand the covenant, what is a covenant, how God entered into a covenant, and an agreement with us so that we could have eternal life, but not just eternal life, also all the promises that He's given for us. So get a hold of it today, listen to it, and faith will grow in your life. Now, the most amazing covenant that God has given us is the death and resurrection of Jesus. That was when the covenant was sealed in His blood. And if we receive that, you have eternal life. Now, my friend, if you've never yet given your life to Jesus, I encourage you to do it right now. The Bible says, if you believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and confess with your mouth that He's Lord and Savior, you will be saved. So let's pray this prayer right now. Say this out loud with me right there where you're watching. Pray this prayer. My Father, thank You. Thank You for this great covenant of love that Jesus gave His life for me, paid for my sin, and then rose from the dead. Today He is alive, and I believe that. I call You Lord. You are my Savior. Right now, I'm born again, a child of God. Thank You, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. You are now born again, a child of God. I have a free gift for you. This is something that's going to help encourage you in your new walk with Jesus. This is my Christian passport out of this world of failure into his kingdom of victory, a great CD that will help build your faith, a Bible study program that's going to help you read through your Bible in a year, and then this card that's going to give you some guidelines and directions now that you are a Christian. That is a free gift from us to you. You write to us at that address, call us on that phone number, and as soon as we got your details, we'll send it to you, and we'll be with you shortly. That's all we have time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. With a call to equip believers to flourish in their ministries, Alan and Janine Bagg are the senior pastors of the Bay Christian Family Church. One church in many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church multiple locations.
Alan and Janine Bag invite you to join us this weekend at the Bay Christian Family Church for some great times of worship in God's amazing presence, for faith building messages from God's uncompromised word, and for some great times of fellowship with the family of God. You can join us in the Helderberg at these times at Section 3 Gan Center on the corner of the N2 and Fabric Street in Somerset West. If you're in the northern suburbs, you can join us at Durbanville Live at these times on the first floor of the Durbanville Conference Center found at 27 Wellington Road. And if you would like to join us at Power Live, we're on the first floor of the Berlin Center on the corner of Optonhorst and Berlin Streets. You're also welcome to meet with our family in Claymont in the Claymont Community Hall on Main Road. We also meet in Stellenbosch, so if you're in that area, connect with us at this location. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to, join the family at the Bay Christian Family Church this weekend for amazing times in God's presence and faith-building times in God's life-changing Word. If you're not close to any of our locations, feel free to participate in our online services over the weekend at alanbagministries.org. For any information relating to the Bay Christian Family Church, our contact details or our locations, please visit us online at alanbagministries.org. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details.